Hi, I'm Lucy and I'm giving an introduction into Wikidata today. So originally I was planning this as a workshop. Um, now it's obviously all online. So some of the topics might be not as in detail as I would hope for. Um, so please, I'm super happy to give you any more details in the end in the questions time or point you into more resources that give you detailed things about each of the points that I will talk about today. Um, generally, I since this is an open source event with lots of people who actually want to do stuff or build something, hack something together, um, I was thinking to give you first a short insight into what Wikidata actually is and then give you a more detailed overview on how you can actually use um, Wikidata to build your own applications. So first, um, quickly about me, I'm Lucy. I'm a PhD student at the moment at the University of Southampton in the UK. I'm from Berlin, where I am at the moment as well. Um, my research is around multilingual linked data. Um, linked data is this concept as Wikidata, like data points that are linked to each other. Um, and generally, I look into how we can support low resource languages on Wikipedia. And um, since forever, I'm a big Wikidata enthusiast. I used to work with the Wikidata team many years ago. And so, yeah, I'm really always excited to show more people into Wikidata and get them interested in the topic. So first of all, obviously, what is Wikidata? Um, Wikidata is this concept to have um, concepts and items. So imagine how Wikipedia is readable um, by humans to have something like a Wikipedia, but readable for machines. So we have um, Pristina for here, here, for example. It's the online interface. We have labels and data points. I'll go into that. Um, but the important point, obviously, is that same as Wikipedia, Wikidata can also be edited by anyone. So that's why we have all those little edit buttons um, all over the Wikidata pages. Anyone can contribute to the data. So it's a huge crowdsourcing effort to get that structured data into one central point. Um, so what we can see here is the example of Douglas Adams. Um, Douglas Adams is the label, in this case in English. It has a unique identifier, which is completely language independent. So usually when we want to refer later on in the programmatic part of this presentation, for example, to Douglas Adams, we would have to address him with Q42. Um, there is a short description in natural language, also available in multiple languages, and aliases, so other ways to address this concept. Generally, Wikidata has um, data, you just imagine as in Wikipedia, it's also closely linked to Wikipedia. So people, places, events, and many, many more things. Um, and then each of the relationships to other entities, so for example, to Jane Bel Belson, uh, the partner of Douglas Adams, we will have this like property object relationship. So Douglas Adams is the spouse of Jane Belson. Um, so we have the property spouse and then we have a value for that property, which is Jane Belson, which in itself is another item or entity in this knowledge graph, it's often called, um, in Wikidata. And then we have so-called qualifiers. Um, that can then say, well, they were married between those times, so we can give a start time and an end date um, to be very precise and also make this data widely reusable. And very important, similar to Wikipedia, each statement in Wikidata should be referenced. So there should be um, an attribution to where this data comes from, because it's not a say, primary sources database. So you shouldn't add new data that you just found through the research or otherwise, but you should always have a reference to where this data comes from. As I said, anyone can edit it, so feel free to create an account or anonymously contribute to the data. Um, Wikidata by now is really heavily edited as well because since it is machine readable, it also means that it's very easy through an API, which I get later on to, um, to actually also add data to the database. So again, this is um, what I try to explain with this relationship. So in this case, we have Ada Lovelace, who is a computer scientist. So we have this triples relationship. So it's three parts, Ada Lovelace, co occupation computer scientist. And due to the fact that we have those 
unique identifiers of the concepts that are language independent, um, we can attach to those labels in different languages. So that can be useful for a variety of tasks because imagine you want to build, for example, a question answering system over Wikidata. Um, so you can ask questions like what occupation has Ada Lovelace and the answer would be computer scientist. Now you can easily port that also into other languages because you do have all this language information available. Um, before we get into how we can reuse Wikidata, I want to give you a quick insight into a few projects that I personally think I might be a bit biased here because some of them are created by friends of mine um, where Wikidata is already used and which I think is quite cool. So the first one is um, uh, the Wikidata map, which is especially important for actually internally, more the editors of Wikidata, where it uh, visualizes um, geolocal every item that has a geo coordinate on Wikidata on a map. So what we could see here, I think that's the map of 2019, that um, Europe is uh, covered with a lot of information, but then lots of other places in the world, um, uh, Latin America, Central America, South America, um, the, the uh, Northern Africa, there are huge parts of the world where there's just still kind of a lack of information on Wikidata. Um, so that's something that can be improved upon, but also can may be seen over time. So when we look at the same map a few years ago, how this information grew and how it also internationally grew. Um, another application that I think is really cool and kind of a bit random, like a bit out of the box basically is Inventaire. Um, which uses Wikidata information about books to build a social network for exchanging books. So what they import from Wikidata very specifically is information about authors, about books, um, editions, they're available in and so on. And so that's quite cool because since Wikidata is crowdsourced, um, all new, so if you um, automatically import data from Wikidata, every new information that's updated on Wikidata, obviously then is also updated in your third uh, party application, such as Inventaire. And then there are also applications in research. So my research specifically focuses a lot around Wikidata. Um, that's why I'm giving an example from my own research as well. Um, in this um, uh, series of papers by now, basically, um, we looked into generation of Wikipedia sub articles based off Wikidata information in English, Arabic, and Esperanto. So what we can show there is that given those um, form of information from Wikidata, we can create multilingual actual sentences. Uh, we use neural networks. If you're more interested in that research, I'm always super happy to chat about it. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know. So, um, Summarizing, why is Wikidata good to use? The entire um, data of Wikidata is under CC0, meaning public domain, so you can literally do anything. I know the developers and the editors of Wikidata always appreciate attribution, and if you let them know what you actually do with the data, but in theory, you can do whatever you want with the data. Um, there are already a lot of open source applications built onto Wikidata in um, any domain. So it's usually quite cool to also look for existing code for a project that you have in mind. And it is, as I said before, it's updated by a large international community of volunteers. So you do get constantly, so your language might not be as well covered at the moment, but you do have this constant influx of new information. And finally, um, Wikidata offers just a lot of information about a variety of topics and that data is inherently machine readable. So as I said before, Wikipedia is this human readable concept. You have articles, they're very long. It's not easy for a machine to process and parse this data um, in text form, but Wikidata is made for machines to understand the data. So as I said, my main focus is um, basically looking into how you can access and reuse the data of Wikidata. Um, I give a few examples and how you could solve them. So uh, let's say you want to pose the question, what is the biggest city with a female mayor? And you want Wikidata to answer that. That is quite a complex question. So that would be best answered with a Sparkle endpoint, which each of those I will get into in more detail. 
Um, if you want to just ask what's the number of inhabitants of Pristina, you have a very clear question, you have an entity you're looking for, you're looking about a fact about one entity, and then the linked data interface is usually what you would go for. If you want to know, for example, how many entities in Wikidata have an Albanian label already because you want to build an application in Albanian and you want to see if your data is actually represented in the right language already, you would, or I personally, there are many ways for each of those to solve them. I personally would go with a database dump. And then <clears throat> for the questions of what are the cities uh, Berlin, London and Pristina called in other languages, you could, for example, go through the API. So as I said, all of those questions are a bit mix and match. So you, you could solve each of those, which each of those um, data interfaces. I just use them as an example because there are four very interesting ways of just accessing the data that I want to highlight. So first of all, we have the Sparkle endpoint. Sparkle is not as difficult as people want to make you believe. Um, I have lots of fun with it, lots of people have lots of fun with it, but it's a bit more complex than the other things because a Sparkle is a querying language basically, which is based on this um, format of triples that I said before, so Douglas Adams, Bowes, um, Jane Bolson I think is her name. Um, so for those, uh, you, instead of like a tabular database, you now have a database based on triples and you can query that. So you can query the entire database of Wikidata. So if we look, for example, into the city with the biggest population um, that has a mayor who is female, um, this would, is what the Spark query look, would look like. So you have the city, you um, need to uh, query for all the cities on Wikidata, you will look for uh, the population, you will order them descendingly and then take just the first one and, and look for the mayor obviously of that city who has the gender female. Um, yeah, and then uh, what's not typically, so that's the query.wikidata.org I think uh, query service. So you just get this interface that I show here. There's also query helper that helps you to build more easy queries. Um, under the help section, there are example queries, also in the examples actually. <laughs> And um, those are super nice to start writing your query. So what I typically do is I always look to a similar example to what I want to do, um, have actual Wikidata so I can look up the, the um, QIDs, this unique identifier of each of the concepts, and then write the um, respective query for it. So that was one way of accessing the data. The another way is the linked data interface. Um, the linked data interface is basically the representation of what you see in the website when you look at, onto one of those um, entities. So when you go on wikidata.org and you look for Pristina, um, you see this website when you search for it and you go to the entity's website. And so you can access all of this data that's just on that site mm, in different data formats such as JSON, RDF, Turtle or the n triples. So now, basically, if you want to ask the question of the number of inhabitants of Pristina, um, you would use this linked data interface. You basically just go through the special entity data and then slash, and then you um, append the data format you want. So in my example, that's JSON. And then you get the JSON blob back from the entire uh, page with the entire data. And you can see that um, the latest data that was entered in Wikidata is from 2013, which is through those qualifiers I showed earlier. And uh, the number in 2013, according to Wikidata, was 207,477 um, people. Um, and then that brings me to the dumps. Um, in the dumps, you can download the entire database of Wikidata really all of the data that's in the database. You have the JSON format, the RDF format, XML format, and for some reason I forgot to mention the NT uh, format, uh, which I tend to use, so I don't know why I forgot it on the slides. And uh, so you have this entire um, set of data from Wikidata, and 
my example, funnily enough, also is based on the NT dump because you have um, just the triple, so the pure statement like that plus Adam, spouse, Jane, Bolson, um, without the qualifiers or anything. You just have those um, line by line, uh, which makes it really nice to first download the data dump. Um, here you can actually see all the formats. They are obviously zipped because they are huge. Um, and then you can use, so I usually just use the shell so I can grab over the dump. And uh, then for example, we can count how many um, labels there are. So we, we go through the dump and grab for the uh, language identifier, um, print it, count it, uh, count the entities and then show the line of entities. Um, and then we have the number of entities with an Albanian label, where the language code in Wikipedia and Wikidata is SQ. Finally, that brings us to the API. So obviously, Wikidata has an API. And if you have used the uh, Wikipedia API, you will be kind of familiar to it. So um, both of those projects are built on MediaWiki, which is an open source software, which you might actually know already. Um, and so the MediaWiki API is also existent for Wikidata. So as far as I know, all of the MediaWiki functionalities should also work on Wikidata. But additionally, you have some functionalities that specifically are there for um, uh, Wikidata installation, which then the software in the background is called Wikibase. But so for the specific case of Wikidata, um, we will have uh, this access to reading and, as I said, editing as well. So if you were to work with a bot, for example, um, yeah, then uh, you, you could also use uh, the API to, to import data into Wikidata. Um, there are lots of the, the API functions that are specifically for Wikidata. As I said, because the software in the background is called Wikibase, they are prefixed with a WB. Um, so now, for example, we can ask what are the cities Berlin, London, and Pristina called in other languages. And as I said, all of those queries, you can easily also answer them in the other way. You could go through the linked data interface and got all of those um, uh, individual items as JSON files. You could also you do that through, the, through a Sparkle query. You could also go through all of the other ways. Just as an example, I formulated um, the query for the API endpoint, where then, as I said, all of the entities, so we, Berlin, for example, um, has the uh, unique identifier of Q64. So in your query, you will not write Berlin, you will write the Q64, and so forth, and so on for each of the cities. And then again, if you um, actually say that you want the JSON format, you get back a JSON format. Mm. So that's it from me already. Um, yeah, I hope uh, you learned a bit in this very brief introduction into Wikidata. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be super happy to answer any questions. Um, otherwise, please reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to me also afterwards in case you're interested in getting more resources about uh, Wikidata. My email address is on the slide. My uh, media wiki username is on the slide and uh, or in case you happen to be interested in my research please let me know i'm always happy to answer any questions around that topic as well um there is the um, uh, for some reason in german suffix um you can also access those if you just drop the de in the end of the links i will fix that in the slides i actually upload um, you can also just uh, access the information online, uh, have an overview, maybe get a bit more in detail with everything. And yeah, as I said, I'd be happy to uh, hear what you think. And thanks so much for having me. And thanks for your attention. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lucy, for this uh, interesting uh, presentation. Once again, I've seen quite a few and uh, uh, Wikidata presentation, but this was very refreshing and, and different. Um, so um, uh, 
Uh, well, I should mention that uh, Lucy is uh, a guest of uh, Comedians of Albanian Language User Group, which is a group that we host, uh, well, we support as, as FLUSC, and uh, we always try to engage developers from the region and from, the, uh, from Kosovo and Albania in Wikimedia projects, which I think is a very uh, worthwhile uh, cause. Um, I don't know if there are any questions from the audience, but uh, if you have any, you can, uh, you know, send them our way. Uh, I had uh, a few questions. So, um, are there, or what examples are there of open source applications using Wikidata? So, there are quite a few. Um, the few that I mentioned, where you can uh, have them, like, uh, the inventaire and so on. There are a few proprietary examples as well. I think the Google Siri question answering system um, uses Wikidata. There is also a question answering system that was developed uh, by the research group I was part of, WD Aqua. Um, that's, I'll just write that in the chat because that's impossible to pronounce. Um, who are also who worked on a question answering system as well but it's a bit more researchy um so there is quite a range of things i think it just depends on what you're looking for and uh with regard perhaps to more mainstream uh applications maybe things that are included with the uh, Linux uh, distri uh, distribution systems or anything like that that we would recognize? Do you know any examples? I'm trying to think because I think so there are lots of wikis and therefore also recent years those like wiki base installments like the Wikidata one for a range of things that are more like open source community um, not that I can think for Linux on the top of my head. Okay. There are quite a few, as I said, there are quite a few proprietary things, but it's mostly like things that need general world facts, so like question answering or like um, voice recognition. There are a few people who open sourced um, a question answering over Wikidata for one of those Amazon Alexa, Google Echo Home things. Um, who weren't well with that? Uh, yeah, it seems like the big guys are, you know, best positioned to to benefit from Wikidata, and uh, uh, I think there's a lot of potential for for open source projects to, you know, exactly. to engage with Wikidata more. Exactly. So, so that's why I like presenting in the open source community because I think it's time that we reclaim our own data, basically. Because at the moment, um, there are lots of small applications using Wikidata. There's lots of research using it. <coughs> lots of proprietary big companies, big names using it. But uh, I think especially the open source community can benefit from it a lot, right? It's just general world facts for whatever we would need, right? So if we had, a uh, question answering system on Linux that wouldn't rely on, for example, like one of the big like Google things, uh, that would be quite cool, right? And there's so much already done in this world uh, with research that is completely open source. There's proof of concept because the big proprietary systems use it. So I think it would be amazing to basically reclaim the data for us. Yeah, let's hope that the work that you and others have been doing in research institutions will trickle down to um, user applications so that, uh, you know, we get more benefit out of this. Um, do you see any, like, yeah, you, you already mentioned these uh, uh, question and answer uh, systems, but any other application that is kind of, uh, waiting for some for Wikidata use that would make uh, good sense right now. So there are quite a few things that I think would be quite nice. I mean, you could do stuff with the language uh, facts. So what we did, for example, was natural language.
which might be a bit big, but there's also um, Reasonator, which um, enables, like it has more like template based creation of Wikipedia articles based on Wikidata in different languages, which I generally think there's a lot of like application possibility there. And generally everything that need fa needs facts. So for example, there is a project called Histo Histropedia, I think. I have to check that. I know those people actually, so it's a bit embarrassing. I forgot their project name. But uh, they have um, a project where they uh, give like time, uh, historic references over time, like a timeline of things happening with Wikidata information. So there's lots of like cool things you can do with facts, right? Uh, there's uh, the idea of using it for a topic of misinformation, fake news. Exactly, Histopedia, yeah. Um, mm. So I think there's quite a lot of things that, that can be done in that space as well, um, where we just have, at the moment, basically we have a very luxurious problems where we have a lot of data, but not so many um, applications. So I think there are quite a few things to do there. Uh, yeah, and uh, okay, uh, good. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, for people that uh, want to engage with Wikimedia projects, either through research or uh, through coding, programming, um, there are grants out there that you can look for. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation does a lot of uh, support for these projects. So we encourage people to get engaged, especially people from uh our region i would say so that we get more diversity so amy if you have anything else to add for the end and yeah uh, please Bye. please reach out to me in case or if you know someone who wants to apply for one of the grants because we just got one of the wikimedia research grants so i could help reading over it and i'm always very really happy to discuss research projects whatever and help out on writing proposals and stuff like that so I'm there for that, if anyone's interested. Great, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you, bye.